good news for your boat to be in the water. Good news for your boat to be in the water. Bad news for water to be in your boat. I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Tonight's message, the message of tonight, will come from the book of Job. I will say this up front. I'll read the verse from the book of Job, chapter 22. I am very much aware that the words we are going to read were uttered by one of Job's friends. By the, name, by the name Eli Faz. I am very much aware of that. Many times we don't quote his words because he was misrepresenting God. But uh, the verse I will read is true. The only problem was he directed it at the wrong person. But the verse is correct. The theology is right. That's a verse we are going to read. Job chapter 22, verse 21. Job chapter 22, verse 21. I'll read from the King James Version. Job chapter 22, verse 21. It says, Acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace with him thereby good will follow you acquaint thyself with him and be at peace thereby good will follow you let's bow our heads in prayer our father who art in heaven once again we stand in thy presence waiting for a word to come from on high disappoint us not this evening but may you speak to us speak to each one of us in the language and in the manner that we will understand tonight we have just read a verse simply saying to us acquaint thyself we are praying for this spirit of eloquence. We are praying for the spirit of receiving. We are praying for the spirit of conviction. The spirit of conversion. And the spirit of repentance. For we have prayed everything in your name. Let the church say Amen. The verse says, acquaint thyself with him now. And be at peace. Thereby good will follow thee. Acquaint thyself with him. You see, if you read other English versions, they say, submit unto him. But I like the King James Version. 
decisions. I like what it says. It says acquaint thyself with him. Make him your friend. Make him your friend. Befriend him now. Befriend God now. Make Jesus your friend. And you will be you will be at peace. You see, I have so many verses today. There is anyone who is writing. I want you to write. Because I am just going to, 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 to mention the verses. I will recite. The verse we have read is this one. The others I will give. So if you are writing, you better write. Acquaint thyself with him now. And be at peace. And goodness will follow you. You see. The Bible is challenging us. We make ourselves. Friends with God. Make Jesus your friend. Spend time with Jesus. Get to know him. Make him your friend. You see, to those who have been married for long, you will find that if you speak to one partner, it's as good as if you have spoken to the other. If you go to the home of a couple, probably the husband is not there. You say to the wife, can I have such and such a thing? She will tell you, I think we we have that thing. But I don't think you can get it. Even if my, wa- my husband was around, I don't think you will get it. Because he normally does not give people that thing. You find people who are close can actually tell what the other would have said this is what the book is saying to us make Jesus your friend such an extent that you understand what he needs that you understand his requirements that you know what makes him happy what makes him sad Uh, let me say this to you my brother spend time with God spend time with God make Jesus your friend let me put it to you and say you are you what you spend time with. I'll ask once again for the for some people to help us with the children. Going forward. I want parents to sit with their children. Because deacons, I have not seen a verse in the, in the Bible which says deacons should make our should ensure that our children are quiet. Going forward, there's a child who is making noise. I'll bring that child here. And I'll call the parents. Remember, we talked, we spoke about building characters. If you know your child cannot keep quiet, sit with your child. What does the church say? Look at him, he cannot even listen to you. Making your child keep quiet. You are seated there. Tomorrow, I will ask them to come up. Let's go back to our message. You know, you are what you spend time with. 
Kalidwani ni mapangika nishimane inu makarita hapo You are like what you spend time with Mumakala ofanana nishimane inu mumakarita hapo If you look at children Mugawaya ngana ana Who spend time watching television Amene ama karita pakanema kuwane na kanema They behave like television people Ama kala ni makarita ofanana nishimane ama ona pakanema They behave like children television people ah makala ni makarido afana nisema na maona pakanema take your child muntenge mwana wanu to the village mupita na emu for two months kwa miyasi hii when the child comes back akabwele na kuno mwanayo he is no longer talking about city things saa zakamba so sinuzanta oni he is talking about farming things ati zakamba sinuza kumunda za uwi you are what you spend time with umakala shimene na umakarita hapo if you spend time with gossipers ngati na umakarita ntawi you behave like a gossip if you spend time with the prostitute you will behave like a prostitute if you spend time with the drunkard you will de- behave like a drunkard and the bible is saying bible spend time with god you can't behave like him I can show you from the Bible that you are what you spend time with. If you go to the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 9, we meet a man called Kish. He was of the Benjamin tribe. The Bible tells us Kish had donkeys. And he lost his donkeys one day. And he wanted someone to go and look for the donkey. And Kish called his son. His son's name was Saul. And he said, Saul, you are the one who is going to look for the donkey. Go get a servant and go with the servant. Let me tell you something. You don't send someone to look for lost donkeys. Who is not acquainted with donkeys? If probably one of us here was to be asked to go and look for donkeys. Before the end of the day, people will not only be looking for donkeys but will be looking for you as well because you will have been lost so you can only send someone to look for donkeys or cattle or sheep who is familiar with them are we together look at it this way Kish had servants but he did not send the servants he called his son and says you are in charge of the search party because he knew his son Saul was afraid of donkeys very close with donkeys he knew how they behave he knew where they would most likely be he knew their favorite places let me tell you something besides long ears and very hard job a donkey is also known for something else it is known for its stubborn it is known for its stubbornness a donkey is very stubborn it does not listen samva as you are driving if a donkey comes on the road you can hoot as much as you like the donkey will look at you and you will look aside now Saul was a friend of donkeys well acquainted with them let's follow his life was he also stubborn 
soul Let's look at his life. I'll give you a few examples. You remember in 1 Samuel chapter 13. When Samuel was supposed to come. And give. For God had declared. That only priests. And prophets. Could offer sacrifice. If you read 1 Samuel chapter 13. Saul who was a political king offered sacrifices doing the work which a prophet was supposed to do when Samuel came to him and said what have you done you are not supposed to have done what you did Saul did not say I am sorry his answer was very simple he said to Samuel you were late that's why I teach like a donkey because he was a friend of God if you go to first Samuel chapter 15 God instructs Saul to go and destroy the Amalekite God says utterly completely destroy the Amalekite Saul goes and but he comes with sheep and, 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 and cattle he also brings Agag but God had said destroy them all and everything they have you see he then goes to Gilgal Samuel comes there Samuel looks at him before even Samuel says Saul says to Samuel, I have done what the Lord said and Samuel says to him if you have done what the Lord said what meanest thou the lowing of oxen and the bleating of sheep what are you here in my ears? Do you, do you know what Saul then says? He does not say, Sorry, I, I, I didn't follow God. He points at the soldiers. And he says, They wrote the things. But a, a, a very he had said, I have shown that he had not done what the Lord he had said. He says, It's not me. They are Stubborn. Stubborn. Like a donkey. That's why the book of Job is saying, Appoint thyself with him now get to befriend Jesus instead of playing with other things you see, even when Samuel, uh, Samuel lifted up his hand verse 22 of first Samuel 15 verse 22 15 said to him to obey is better than sacrifice to, to to hearken is better than the fate of rams. For the sin of rebellion is as the sin of rebellion. Even after that, Saul still said, I did nothing wrong. Stubborn. Like a donkey. We can move on. Remember first Samuel 24. Where, uh, uh, before you even go to 24. Remember first Samuel 19. 19 Samuel wants to kill David. I think that's from verse 19. He then says, uh, he is then told that David is at Nayot. At Rama. 
So Saul sends a group of soldiers to capture David. But when they get to where David is, David is with Samuel. And Samuel is on the pulpit. Delivered word from on high. When the soldiers get Instead of grabbing David, David, the soldiers begin to prophesy. They become prophets. And Saul gets to hear about it. Instead of Saul saying, I'm sorry, this man David is a man of God. Saul sends another group which then becomes prophets again. He sends another group. Group, which then becomes prophet until he says I'll go on my own when he got into the presence of David he also became, he started prophesying but after that if he had been a normal person he would have said I will not go after David but if you go into 1 Samuel 24 he is again after David despite what God had shown him stubborn stubborn donkey because he was used to his father's donkey what are you acquainted with 1 Samuel chapter 24. Samuel Saul is told that David is in the desert of Engedi. He follows there. He does not see David. But David sees him. David does not kill him. David actually says to Saul, if I wanted to kill you, I would have killed you. But I've let you go. Because you are God's anointed. And Samuel says, Saul says, I am sorry, David. I will never do it again. And so Saul so, so goes home. When he, go, when he gets home, a few days later, he's told that David is in the, in the, in the desert at Zip. That's 1 Samuel chapter 26. You know what Saul does? He says, let me go and kill him. He persists. But God is showing him, no. This man is mine. But Saul persists. He was a stubborn man. Stubbornness which came through being an acquaintance even if you look at his end first Samuel 28 he goes to a singer he goes to a singer he goes to a singer instead of going to God he goes to a singer why? because he was a stubborn is a donkey. My brothers and sisters, the Bible says, acquaint thyself with him now. You are what you spend time with. You are what you spend time with. That's why the book of Psalms 15 verse 8 it says those who make idols will look like them and also those who trust the idols will end up looking like them you are what you spend time with you are what you spend time with the Lord speaks 1 Corinthians 15 verse 33 says do not be deceived bad company corrupts character do not be deceived do not be deceived bad company corrupts character 
I've heard people saying Jesus was a friend of sinners. You are right, but he was not a friend in their sins. Some of us we have drunk as his friends. They have been our friends for the past 20 years. And we have never invited them to church. We have never told them about the good news. That's not what Jesus was like. Jesus in the presence of sinners would lead them to heaven. There are some ladies here with impamv in God's work. But their best friends are prostitutes. They will tell you who she slept with last week. How many clients she had the other week. Because they sit and discuss. But God says, Bad company corrupts character. No matter how upright you are. Do you remember Moses? According to one of my favorite authors by the name of Ellen White. She says in a book entitled Patriarchs and Prophets. Moses never worshipped an Egyptian god. He knew there was God in heaven. Oh, he lived in Egypt. But let me say something. I see, remember we said you are what you spend time with. According to the book of Acts. I said the book of Acts. Because I know Moses is in the book of Exodus. But I'm talking about the book of Exodus. Chapter 7. Chapter 7. From verse 20. Remember verse 20. Stephen gives you a life summary, a biography of Moses. He says when Moses was 40 years old, he decided to visit his people. It's the same story you find it in Exodus chapter 2. And Moses is so an Egyptian and an Israelite fighting. Right, I want you to, to hear this. Because Moses lived in Egypt. Moses started behaving like, Egypt, like an Egyptian. The Egyptians were known for their ferocity. They were temperamental. They were no nonsense people. They believed any issue could be settled through. They believed it. You find Moses became like them. Because he was living with Egyptians. Remember when he saw these people fighting. One Egyptian and one Israelite. Moses concluded that the Egyptian was wrong. Who told him that the Egyptian was wrong? The Bible simply says, Moses looked this way and he looked that way. And seeing that there was no man, he killed the Egyptian. Oh, my, my daughter reminded me during the week. Saying, do you remember what you always say? But Moses looked this way and he looked this way and he did not see anyone and he killed the Egyptian but he forgot to look this way. He had done it. He would have seen. Are there some 
them filthy houses filthy establishments sometimes at this business center some are church members some are reputable members of society before they enter they look this way and they look seeing no man they enter look up God is seeing you see when Jesus when, when, when Moses killed this man the Bible said the following day he saw two Israelites fighting so he went to them before he could say uh, why are you fighting they, they started retreating they said stay away from us you want to kill us how did they know that Moses had killed a person? Many scholars agree. That that is the light. Who Moses had saved the other man. Was one of the fighting men. He was a problem that man. That's why he knew what had happened. Now Moses, when he heard this, Moses took off because he knew was, his life was in danger. What I want to show you is because Moses had spent time with Egyptians, behaving like an Egyptian. Bible he went somewhere where there was a, you know, the man, the priest of Midian. When he went there, my Bible says, there he saw. Uh, when he arrived in that land, so Moses saw, uh, he sat by a well. And there were some seven girls who came daughters of one father the daughters of Jethro their eldest sister was Zipporah so when they came to the, to the well they had their livestock but when they tried to water their animals other shepherds came and drove away the girls shepherd, uh, uh, animals the bible simply says in exodus 2 it says but Moses he helped them. You are not here. Moses, what did Moses do? You see, if you if you don't uh, put your mind to what you are reading, you might miss it. How did Moses help them? Do you think he went to the other shepherds and said, Excuse me? Excuse me. Honor ladies. No. Uh-uh. Remember, he was used to living with the Egyptians. Whenever there is a problem, distribute freely. Like my a relative of mine, who used to say, he was not a church person. Who used to say, for God so loved me that he gave me these two fists to offend others and to defend myself so I must distribute it so when Moses saw what had happened I believe Moses was carrying a small suitcase he simply took the small suitcase and, and put it under the tree where he was sitting he just took off his jacket and he advanced towards the biggest shepherd and he said to the shepherd 
Who do you think you are? Why do you take advantage of women? If you are men enough, can we now begin? I am ready. I want to show you. Doing a few press ups. And and say, I am ready. And when this uh, shepherd started uh, stammering, what is he said? You tell your boys to remove all their animals and tell them to, co to collect all the ladies' animals and bring them and water them. Water them. After watering them, they should help the girls drive the, the animals. But if you don't do that, fire and brimstone here. There will be fireworks. When, when, when this, this shepherd looked at Moses' countenance, Moses was flexing. As he was flexing, he said, I said, meet no muscles. Yes. He took off his shirt. And he couldn't run He said to the other shepherd, Gentlemen, because Moses promised to them. Moses said, I can assure you, after I've dealt with you, you are going to throw away your toothbrush. Because you will not have any teeth. Oh, make me better make sure. So this man says, No, 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 no. Let's not do it. So you'll find that's how he helped. And then the ladies went home with their animals. The says, when they got home, Jethro asked, How come? You have come home so early. Do you remember what they said? They said an Egyptian helped us. Was Moses an Egyptian? He was an Israelite. But why did they say an Egyptian? His behavior. The way he spoke. Excuse me. I'm a Egyptian way. I'm a Because he was acquainted with Egyptians. He started behaving like an Egyptian. Watch who you spend time with. You see, the father said, Call him. So Moses went there. And uh, the old man says, uh, "This, this, uh, it's me imagining." That when he went before old, old man Jethro, for God had already spoken to Jethro, and he had said, "I want you to sort this young man out." So when Moses got there, you know Moses was very learned. Acts chapter seven says he wa he learned everything. In the Egyptian learning system. I was reading one Bible written uh, Hapa study Bible. This Bible. is not a church Bible. I mean it's not it does not belong to any church. It's an ordinary Bible, but the, uh, scholars have put comments in it. The Bible or Bali men opusira Bible I can demanga zao menu. Under that verse they've put a star. Then the manga Zaba verse men I cap on yenyes. And they've said it has been discovered. They are gonna put it quapezeka from research and archaeological diggings which have happened. That Moses said not less than ten degrees. Kutimose anal in dima degree. 
I remember some of them He had a degree in literature He had a degree in English In music, sorry, in music He had a degree in sociology A degree in philosophy He had a degree in medicine A degree in medicine He had a degree in war I've forgotten the other four. But he had no less than ten degrees. Obtained from Egyptian universities. So when he came before Jethro, he said to Jethro, uh, I'm actually looking for a job. Jethro said to him, how qualified are you? Moses pulled his small suitcase and he took out his certificates he started showing Jethro I have a degree in music the old man was listening the old man said what music he said all music and compose for groups I can compose for quartets for trios for solos for quintets for octets for orchestras I can compose he says you know I can pick my voice to be a soprano and he started yes 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 Moses says I've got also a degree in war studies I, I, I know how to strategize. I've also subjects in equipment making. Weapon making. I can show you how to shape stones. So that when you throw stones at your enemies, one stone can hit five people. Depending on the shape. And in fact, it depends also on how you stand. To, to articulate your legs. He starts demonstrating. The old man is listening. The old man says, yes, I have heard. I have heard. He says, I have a degree in medicine. Conventional medicine and herbal medicine. He says, I see you are balding. According to my medicine, I you need to rub some uh, uh, fig leaves. The old man says, yes, I've seen you. And the old man says, yes, I have a job for you. Which fits, fits your qualification. And you are going to be a very big man. Moses says, is that, the man says, yes, yes. In fact, you are going to have uh, thousands of subordinates. I'll give you a place to build a company house. You are going to enjoy your life. With all these degrees are able to practice there. Jethro says, in fact, tonight I don't want you to sleep here. I want you to sleep at the company. That's where you will sleep. That's where you are going to live. So, he, he, he wanted to give Jethro the certificates. Jethro Jethro says, let's, walk, let's go. I walked past all the homes until they came to the fields. And then Jethro looks at him. Jethro says to Moses, this is the place I was telling you. You can see as many buildings as you want. Uh, they, there happened to be some sheep which were grazing. And Jethro said, Those are going to be your subordinates. Those sheep are going to be your subordinates. But Moses said, No! You can't make me 
Shepherd. shepherd. You do not see my qualification. Just looked at him. He says, I saw those That's why I brought you here. Because those are Egyptian qualifications. They fit you for nothing. If you go and read the book of Acts, as Stephen continues to enumerate, he says Moses became a shepherd for 40 years. How many years did he spend in Egypt? 40 years. He then becomes a shepherd for 40 years. 40. 40 years in Egypt. He started behaving like an Egyptian. He becomes a shepherd. A shepherd of sheep. Oh, let me tell you something about sheep. A sheep is a very humble animal. A very humble animal. An animal which is so humble though it is very powerful because a ram a male ship this size if it gets angry it can kill the biggest bull you have seen those who have kept ship and, and cattle, you know what I'm talking but about. But once a ship gets angry, you have to drive all cattle away from it. If it head but a bull, that bull will not move even a step, it will fall there and die. And despite that strength, even a child can lead it to slaughter. Even a child can kill it. So God looked at Moses. And he said, This one must be my deliverer. The deliverer of my people. But not the Egyptian style. He can only do it. If he is as humble as a sheep. God said he must no longer be acquainted with Egyptians. But he should be acquainted with sheep. He spent 40 years in Egypt. So he had 40 years mentality. mentality. And God put him in the wilderness with the sheep. For 40 years. You know, I've always found this amazing. Until I realized what was happening. Why 40 this way and 40 that way? If Moses had spent 35 years with the ship, he would have remained with 5 years change. Five years change. You know, when you buy something, if it's too much, you get change. So God said, each, for every day you spend in Egypt, you must spend it with the ship. So that we take out the Egyptian mentality. And we put the ship mentality. Follow after Moses left the work of a shepherd 40 years later. God himself says about Moses there has never been anyone there is no one and there will be no one who is as humble as Moses. Where did the humility come from? It came from being with the ship. So I'm saying tonight, like the verse said, acquaint thyself with him tonight. And be like him. Thereby good will follow you. And you will be at peace. Oh, I can give you an example. According to Mark chapter 3 verse 17, there were two brothers. 
John and James. Johanne and Jacobo. And Jesus gave them a nickname. De Yesu anapata maiga. He called them Bonages. Ana chura kunena kuti Bonages. Bonages. The sons of thunder. Ana adipariwali. Because they were also like that. Chifungwa ana ndi makari wa fana ndi dipariwali. They were no nonsense. Ana ndi anthu wasapanga na masewera. They were always smarting for a fight. Ana ndi wakonsekera kuchita nkondo. And Jesus knew about it. Yesu amadzwa zimenis. You remember in the book of Luke chapter 9. Mukumukira mbuku la Luke chapter 9. Verse 49. Verse 49. They came to Jesus and said to him. Ana bwana kwesu tikuna na na. We saw someone casting out demon in your name but he is not one of us he is not a disciple so we stopped him do you think they said sorry don't do it again they grabbed him by the collar and they said to him do you know Jesus is he your friend he doesn't move around with you and they distribute and they made him commit to them they are promised to them they are the drivers of the will I do it again so they came to Jesus and said we have dealt with him they were ferocious no nonsense remember in Luke chapter 9 again verse 51 as they are with Jesus they come the city of Samaria. And they are told you can't get in. And then they look at Jesus. John and James they look at Jesus. And they say to Jesus, Lord, do you want us to call fire from heaven? So that we can burn all these people. You know, that's why I always say God is not man. If I had been Jesus, I would have said to them call the fire. Did they have power to call fire? Did they have the power? But now they are actually asking Jesus. Do you want us to do you a favor? By helping you to call a fire. When they had no power. The powerful one was Jesus. They didn't ask him to call fire. Lord, if you want to call fire. They were self-centered. They thought everything to be done by them. They were also to discriminate so so oh. and if you remember in the book of mark chapter 10 he says they 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 said to their mother but Mark says they went to Jesus and they said to him Lord when you get to heaven we want you to allow us one of us to sit to the right and the other one to the left you don't understand what they were talking about Jesus had just told them that I sit on the right side of my father in other words to the left of Jesus that's where God himself sits but they come to him and say we want one to sit to right on the left God will look for somewhere else to sit do you see what people we are dealing with? But because they spend time with Jesus. They spend time with Jesus. And they never remained the same. That's why John writes about love. That's why he calls himself the beloved. Because he looks at what he was. And how God changed him. That's why he writes 1 Peter 1 John chapter 3 verse 1. Where he says he loved. Oh what men have loved. That's because he loved. That's because but through association with Jesus he became the apostle of love no longer being ferocious no longer being self-centered no longer being selfish but he becomes an apostle of love by acquainting himself with him by acquainting himself 
with him. Tonight, my brothers and sisters, Bible is saying to you and I, acquaint thyself with him. Whereby good will, will follow you. And you must, we must all know this. What Amos says in Amos chapter 3. Amos chapter 3. Verse 3. He says, Can two walk together unless they are in agreement? Whoever is your friend is your friend because you agree on each other's behavior. I'm inviting you to be a friend of Jesus. The Bible says good will follow you. I'll give you a few examples I will not explain of what goodness will, what goodness will follow you. If you acquaint yourself with God, you will have pardon of sin. If you acquaint yourself with God, you have an assurance of salvation. By acquainting yourself with God, you will have peace of conscience. By acquainting yourself with God, you have victory over sin. By acquainting yourself with God, you will have support in times of trials. By acquainting yourself with God, citizenship in heaven is assured. So I invite you tonight to acquaint yourself with Jesus. Let him make him your friend. Make Jesus your friend. Make Jesus your acquaintance. Join John Scriven as he sings. When when he says, oh, what a friend we have. All our sins and griefs to bear. Oh, what a privilege to carry everything. To the Lord, Lord in prayer. Oh, he says, oh, what peace we often feel. What needless pain we bear. Oh, because we do not care. Everything to the Lord in prayer. Jesus, your friend. What the book of Proverbs tells us that he is a friend he sticks closer than a brother I invite you tonight to walk with Jesus acquaint yourself with him we are going home someone tonight who says I want Jesus in my life I just want to acquaint myself with Jesus Elder Mula can you come here Elder Mula can you come here are closed as we are praying. Tatendimplumusuatu Kumansu baliena amene ya kusinka sinka funo banga maganizo. Akuona kupere wera mmoyo wao. Kuti maindedu mwao, mwina antu amena maenda nao. Anali antu amene sana ata kwa tengera kwa inu. Ambedu mpano na utimuka punzise, mkati punzise tonse. Tikate kuona kupere wera watu. Tika sanke moyo. Tika sanke kuenda ndi inu. Ambedu kuziwa satana, tika banga jisangu nga dejimeneji. Sama sangalala iai. Ama funa tika ende ndi yeyo kutitika taike. Kwa mainu munga muna buwela paziko la bansi. Mnati kuonda tonse kutayensa mnanga kulubile mwainu. Asaka taike iai. Ambuyo kupe mpani kutife tika sanke moyo. Paliena amene. Ali mavuto siyana siyana. Mwina ama funa kutatirani. Kwa maifaya mavuto amene ya organika. Ndia ambuyo kupe mpani kutimuka yanke mapempere wawo. Kuti munga bata zimenezu wakate kulimbiri la painu. Kutintawi zonse ya saka kusieni. Tukwa ikiza manja mena matipasa utenga umeneu. Brother Kahia, ndia abusa ajintamba gama. Kuti mkaa dalite, mkaa buwezele tanzirabu ino. Kuna utumawa akateso kutipasa utenga umeneu. Kumansu bala ntua ambiri, amene muna mwaka kufela utenga umeneu. Makwao, mpa nusu ambuwe, amene wakabanga jisanko jimeneji. Mkaa jirimbikite. Kuti bantawi yoenera, akakalepo mpano. Kuti anzao, akamaka banga jisanko jina. Kufuna kuenda ndi nuntawi zonse, kufuna kubati zidwa mkaka ya nao limozi. 
ambuye na mwina wakandika kubwela chifuwa chotele kutima banja hausa kwa alola mwina hausa kwa alola kutaka kubwela pa meneba kapena makolo wawo saa kwa alola kubwela hapa tupimpa mkafa kwa insele ntima kuna nataka alola kubwela pa meneba kutina onsu wakapa ngeji sanko chimeneji pa metu kubwela na makwatu mkati basi somo cha maendedwe mkati teteze mkati basi tanzirabu ino kutika tukubanga sukana omeneu chobu tinja jina jiri jonsa chimeneji nga zidige Kurinso kana mene ukali perege ambuye mwa chotsere tazipe mpazi mene zinzina si Kristo amene fele bantanda amen